Hey guys, thanks for joining me this week. If you're new to my channel, my name is Stephanie. I am a life and relationship coach. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. And you guys, we are gonna talk about healthy relationships this week. I love this topic because honestly, we don't go to dating 101, friendship 101, and really learn what a healthy relationship should look like and feel like. So in this video, I wanna give you the four really standards that you should have in all relationships that will equate or give you a healthy outcome. But the fifth reason I want to give you the fifth standard is really just pertains to romantic relationships. And at the end of the day, there's no real difference between a romantic relationship and a friendship other than physical intimacy. Let's remove physical intimacy from the equation. Let's just get to like the basics of healthy relationships. The first thing that should be there, so this is important to write it down, make sure you know this stuff, and examine your current relationships, but this will obviously help you when you are dating and going into new relationships, is respect. Respect has to be the number one thing that is in any relationship in order for it to be healthy. Let's start with the signs that respect is not in your relationship. You interrupt each other when you're talking. You don't value each other's opinions. There are absolutely no boundaries in your relationship. There is no kindness. There's no consideration. There's no real appreciation for this person and what they bring to the table or for what you bring to the table. Most of the time when respect is not there, it's because the person is leading with their ego. They are wounded and they're coming from that ego state. A lot of times there's just like a lack of understanding. The communication is just off, meaning we probably want the same things, but we're saying it in two different ways. So when there's communication issues, difference in upbringing, power struggles, those kind of things, that's where you're not going to have respect between two people. When a person doesn't value who you are and what you bring to the table, respect is not going to be there. And you have to be honest with yourself. Not every person that you meet, you are going to respect. Not every person that what they bring to the table, you admire, you value, you believe to be, to weigh heavy in your relationship. When someone's wounded, when they have a past that they haven't really healed from, whether it's narcissism, codependency, all of those things, and of course, I don't value you. I don't I don't really have any boundaries with you. I don't appreciate you. I don't really look at you and appreciate just who you are at your core. And even if you have a person in your life that, yeah, you're like, Steph, I do appreciate this person at their core. Like, I do like this person. There are some things about them that you don't admire and that you wish would change. Now, there's always something that we're gonna wanna change about a person, of course, but these things that you're wanting to change you don't realize are actually really core things that weigh very heavily you are downplaying just how important those things are communication is probably the next one these are usually the big ones that everyone talks about although i feel like communication is sometimes the first thing that people say and for me it never is it never will be it will always be respect does this person value who i am do they respect, do they understand my character? Do they appreciate my character? Like I wanna get to the core of a person. I don't wanna just get to communication and trust and honesty and like all those other things, which those things are important. But if the respect isn't there, you're not gonna trust the person. If the respect's not there, you're not gonna have healthy communication. And healthy communication is about two people being able to communicate, to verbally talk to each other about their thoughts and opinions. Now there's two sides of communication. There's the person that's doing the talking and the person that's doing the listening. So being able to be a healthy listener and a healthy talker, that's important. If I'm talking, I cannot project, I cannot be nasty and passive aggressive or give you the silent treatment or make you the problem telling you that you need to change and this needs to, none of those things can happen. I have to be able to own how I feel and then communicate that in a healthier way. So most people can't do that. Most people manipulate, most people gaslight, most people project and all of those emotionally abusive kind of tactics. That's how people like to communicate. Now, if I'm a listener, am I listening to understand and use empathy to try to put myself in your shoes and understand where you're coming from? Or am I listening to just respond because I'm coming from my ego and this is more of a power struggle between the two of us? So you can see that, and you can, when you look at the people in your life, look at where do you struggle? Like do you, when you're talking with this person, do you struggle listening? Do you struggle talking because you just, they get under your skin and you're just like reactive sometimes and they can trigger you. 
So communication is so important, but in order to have a healthy uh, communication style with another person, both parties have to be able to do this dance of give and take. And I think the biggest thing in all relationships is, do you know where you're wounded and do you take responsibility for that? So I think when two people can do that, you'll always have healthy communication. You may not have it all the time because we're humans and like we're gonna react and we're gonna get defensive and those things are gonna happen. But when they happen, do you slow, do you quickly squash it because you own your stuff? That really determines whether or not this really, well, first off, it'll determine whether or not you can have disagreements and arguments and not it not blow into World War III and you can just have a disagreement and then be able to hash it out in a really good way. So if those things are not there, then you're gonna have dysfunctional communication. If they are there, then you will be practicing healthy communication because not every time you're gonna do a bang up job on communicating. The third thing is trust. Trust is inevitable, we all know this. It is, I mean, it's really the building block of all foundations. So if I respect you and you respect me, then chances are I'm going to start to trust you and trust is something that is built. It's not just about trusting a person that they're not going to cheat on you, but it is about trusting a person, not just with your heart, but also with your mind. And you trust that what they say they mean. And when they say they're going to do something, they follow it up with action. Like they're, the trust aspect is not just about, like I said, going off and cheating. It's about the whole, it's about the safetyness in a relationship. When all of these things, all of these five things are present, in a relationship, you feel safe with this person. When you feel safe with this person, you want to be vulnerable with this person. When you're vulnerable with this person, you connect m deeper on an emotional level with this person. And that just builds for good, great relationships, amazing relationships, because those are the relationships that you're happier in, you're thankful for your partner. If it's a romantic relationship, great intimacy because you're connecting, not just on a physical level, but on an emotional level and a mental level. And it's just, you're fulfilled in your relationship. It doesn't mean that everything's perfect. It doesn't mean that, oh my God, we never go through hard times or we're never faced with challenges, but you have a solid person to go through those challenges with. And emotional support is incredibly important because these people in your life are your partners. They're the people that you go to when you're struggling, when you forget who you are, when you're going through a depressive state, when you lost your job, when you're transitioning, like all of the things that you're going to go through in life, they're difficult in, a, an, in of themselves. But when you have a horrible people around you or you're in a crappy relationship, it's gonna be even harder because you're not getting the empathy, the comfort, the support that you really need to be able to overcome what you're, what you're having to overcome. And yes, don't get me wrong, a lot of that has to do with also being able to pick up the pieces yourself and taking responsibility for yourself, but we can't be strong all day, every day. Relationships are about give and take, and you should be able to have good, solid emotional support. You should have the people in your life that know who you are, that remind you of it, that are never judgmental, never passing shame or guilt on you, that make you feel good for who you are. Those things will, wholeheartedly strengthen your relationship and create such a bond that you will never leave this person and they will never want to leave you because you have everything that you need in this relationship and you're sustaining your happiness because of these two people coming together, again, whether a friendship or romantic relationship that are actively working on themselves and working on this relationship that they have with each other. And I gotta tell you, really good relationships, they actually don't require that much work. Because if you're working on you and they're working on themselves, the work that you would put into the relationship, you're doing on your own for yourself and then the relationship just benefits from that work. The last thing for all relationships, these are the basics. These are just the, the easy standards just we're talking about the foundation here we're not even talking about going above and beyond all the above and beyond and the sprinkles and the 
you know, all of the amazing other stuff of all relationships, that stuff will come naturally and easily when these things are here. So when these things are here and the foundation is good, you build on that and you have everything else that you've always wanted in a relationship. But number five, this really pertains to romantic relationships. I think it can pertain to friendships as well, but not as much as a romantic relationship because Obviously with a romantic relationship, you're building a life together and this has to be here. And that is shared values, shared beliefs. You can have your own interests, you can have your own things that you value and things like that, but there has to be common ground that you guys come together. You guys have to both want the same type of life. So we're talking career, family, responsibilities in the house, who does what, each of your roles. You cannot have a successful business if the accountant is trying to be the marketing person and the marketing person is the janitor and like all of these roles are all over the place. There has to be a clear indication of who you are, who I am, and there has to be a good balance and dance between these two. You take the spotlight and I'm gonna take a back seat. I'm gonna take the spotlight, you take a back seat. So there has to be this like flow in the relationship. And when I take the spotlight, do you respect me for it? or do you judge me for it? So this, see what I mean? Like it always goes back to that respect thing. And someone who is wounded, who's in their ego, they're not going to respect anyone. So someone who's narcissistic, not gonna happen. A woman who is too in her masculine, not in her feminine, which I don't really love talking about feminine and masculine energy because I think it's important that we, I mean, first off, we all have both and it's about balancing both. You don't want a man that's too in his masculine that can't let you lead. And you don't want a woman that's too in her feminine where you don't respect her and she has no opinion. So it's all about balancing energies in general and being healthy human beings, not being a man and being a woman. Like, no, it's just about balancing all aspects of being human and not putting a gender on it. That's just my digressing side note there. Um, but shared values absolutely have to be there. This is sometimes where things can get really messy in relationships where there's not a contract or an agreement or a sitting down of what are the roles, where are we at, where do we want to go. And this should be happening throughout the course of all relationships, obviously more so romantic relationships, where as you're going through different phases, whether it's dating, living together, married, kids, maybe no kids, I travel all the time, you got a new job and you work from home, whatever, oh, now the parents are sick, we have to go build this house and we're doing the, when all of these, when life is happening, you have to be able to sit with your partner and have meetings, just like you would do at work, okay? We're gonna have a team meeting and we're gonna figure out what's the goals and how do we wanna get there? And this is the same with relationships. It's not just about the goal of like, okay, let's save money for the kid's college fund and let's save money so we can build on that addition. It's also about, are we happy in our relationship? What needs to change? What do we need more of? What do we need less of? Now we're moving to a different state. What is that going to look like? You have to be able to sit down and have those kind of, those are probably the difficult conversations because you each are gonna to come to the table with your own ideas and opinions and they may not always be aligned. You're not gonna be always on the same page with every single person. It's ridiculous to think that way, but it is about having that common ground and it is about respecting the other person. See what I mean? When all those things are there, you have a great relationship and you want to be with this person for the rest of your life. And you truly, tr I mean, this is like some soulmate stuff here. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go back, take notes. These are the five things. Make sure these things are present in all your relationships, especially new ones. And thank you guys so much for joining me this week. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to follow me on social. Everything's down below. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all the good stuff. I'll see you next week.